Hi everybody, Rob here from Prior Studios and welcome to this second in my new Fusion 9 series. This one we're going to look at the camera tracker and you can see here I've just got some footage that I shot using the DJI Spark. Um, and first of all, let's just choose the range that we want to see inside our footage here. So I'm going to go for uh, frame 0 to frame 220. So let's come over here to our render range end and I'll put this in the global as well just so that it makes the most of our, our screen space here and I can see that whole 221 frames across the bottom. Okay so let's go back to the start and I'll just play through the frames so you can see what the footage looks like. So my previous video talked about the planar tracker which is really good for tracking things like section of walls, doors, maybe a bit of floor uh, but not so good for any 3D data and I would like to put just something in here, it doesn't matter what, I'll probably end up just putting a sphere in to show you how the track works, uh, but the video is much more about the process of actually tracking your footage. So let's go back to the start and with my base footage selected, which I'll call Drugo because somebody's graffitied Drugo on that door, I'm gonna hit shift space. This will bring up the avenue tool um, and camera tracker there. So as you start typing, any tool that has the characters you're typing will pop up in the list just to make it a bit easier for you. So I'm going to hit the down arrow and return with camera tracker selected. And because my base footage was already selected, you can see it's piped directly. Now, if you have something with lots of inputs and you're not sure which one it is and you don't want to hover around and wait for it to show up, you can either option or right click on the output of your original node. And let go over the target node and it will tell you your options. So you might have a long list here of different inputs. Now the tracker only has the one input that we're going to use for this, so image to track, that's fine. It knows. So let's hit the two key to put this in our right hand viewer. Now nothing is showing here, so what do we do to get started? Well the camera tracker works in a fairly linear fashion. You go from uh, track, camera, solve and then export. But first of all let's go to the options just at the end and we can make a few changes. So let's darken the image for a start. Uh, and let's change our locator size. I'm going to bring that right up to one. And trail length, I'll just increase maybe a touch to seven. And you'll see that when it happens. So if we go back to track and we click on this preview auto track locations, you can see now the locators. Uh, and these are all the points that the footage is going to be looked at. Um, so a quick note. Uh, Luma is almost always the best channel to look at when you're tracking footage. Um, minimum feature separation, this is about the distance between any tracking points. So if you want a denser set of tracks, you can re reduce the minimum se uh, separation. Like so, and you can see we have now a bucket load of tracking points, but that's probably too many. Um, because we'll find that actually uh, this sea of green dots in the leaves and everything is going to actually make this much harder. Um, what's going to be most useful for us is the floor area, I would have thought, because that's going to be the most stable set of tracks. And I'll just leave that at the default uh, 0 0.05, like so. The gutter size is about the kind of the, the perimeter of your frame. So at the moment, this is set to one. So as your tracking points near the edge of the frame, it will start to ignore them so that anything odd happens, uh, it just gets discarded and it doesn't worry about it. Okay, new track defaults. Um, now there are a couple of different tracking methods. There's planar and there's an optical flow as well. Uh, we'll stick with the, the, the standard fusion tracker. Um, but the, the useful th thing here is we can change the color of the tracking points uh, just to help us visualize as we're seeing. Um, so at the moment these are green and that's because these are locators, they're not yet tracking points that will happen at the next stage. Um, so if we were working with footage maybe of the sea or something uh, with lots of turquoise, we might want to choose a contrasting color there. So let's hit auto track and you'll see these have gone turquoise now, which is what I was just talking about. Um, you can see this is actually tracking pretty quickly and it looks like it's pretty stable but we'll find out in a minute because the, the camera tracker gives us tools to recognise what tracks look good and to delete any bad tracks. Uh, this will now track backwards because we have bi-directional tracking turned on which just helps to kind of double check everything and make sure those points are solidly locked in place where at all possible. 
Okay, so once that's finished, which will happen at any second, we'll move over to the camera tab here at the top. And I'm going to change the focal length. I know that the 35mm equivalent on this Spark is 25. So we'll set that there. I'm not going to worry about any of the other settings here. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the film gate, the aperture, any of those settings, all the lens problems. Um, so I'm going to go to properties, sorry, not problems. I'm going to go to the solve tab. And here we can define a few options. I think the best way of doing this is usually to let it solve first and then deal with any problem points. So let's hit solve and this will take a second. So when we do this, um, you'll see we have this dialogue pop up and this will probably take about a minute, minute and a half for 220 frames and this kind of density. Um, you'll see launching solver, it, this lasts for kind of 90% of the, the whole solve process and then all of a sudden it will just come in and this will go and uh, your solve will be done i'm going to pause because you don't need to hear me wittering on about useless nothings okay so that solve took uh what we're looking at 49 seconds solve took 11.47 okay so a lot of that time was spent actually um, setting up the 3d data okay so first of all you can see that we have some color coding going on. So some of these are more green, some of them go through yellow into orange and then red. Now, if you have a red point, you can just come in, select it, and it will go yellow when this point is selected and hit the backspace just to kill them off. I'm gonna do these two here and this one here. But actually, there are some really useful tools to let you clean up this data. Now, this data is actually pretty good. We have a uh, a solve error here of 0.6 and anything below one is effectively a good track because you know we're looking at one pixel our, our slippage is less than a pixel so we don't really have to worry too much but if you have a few issues you can come into say minimum track length and you can increase that minimum uh, so that you know your your the length of that tracking data on that individual point is going to be good uh, because these will come and go they will kind of spawn new points during the footage as the camera moves and they'll disappear so this is kind of giving a track length um, in time rather than necessarily across pixel data minimum track error now this is uh, an interesting one and it can be quite useful so obviously if this was pulled all the way down to the left you would have a, a, a maximum track error sorry of zero which would mean nothing could be right which means that all of these points would go yellow. Um, so let's just do that to show you. And even by this point here, uh, I haven't even got to zero, all the points are, are basically garbage according to that line in the sand that we've just drawn. So I'm gonna take that back and I'll just leave it around the default, it doesn't have to be close. Uh, maximum solve error is gonna be very similar. So as I move to the left, but so the solve is actually pretty good because we've got all the way down to well, 0.5, and we've still got a load of good green, green tracks. So I'm going to leave it at 1.5, 1.6, thereabouts. Uh, and this is obviously picking up a lot of the, the points in the greenery, which is moving because there's a breeze in the shot. You, these are, are moving as well. So we'll select the tracks satisfying the filters and hit delete. And that will remove any of those tracks that we have defined as being unwanted. Uh, I'm also going to get rid of that one there because it was bugging me. And I'm going to get rid of these ones here in the greenery. I know the tracker thinks they're good, but I would rather not have them. And I'm going to get rid of those ones. So that's how you can work with the uh, different kind of elements of your scene, just to help you clean things up. Now we have an export tab. So let's move to the export tab and have a look at what we can do. Now, the first thing I like to do is just go to my export options and make sure that all of the tools or nodes that I want to export uh, selected, which they are. I'm gonna to go to my ground plane and I'm gonna make this a brighter pink just because it helps me visualize what I'm doing and also it means I don't forget to get rid of it. Um, I'll have that shown in the view, that's always good. And let's go to our 3D scene transform. Now at the moment this is click here this is aligned we want to unalign this because what we want to do is define what we want to be our ground plane so first of all I'm just going to select all the points that lie on my kind of XZ plane which will be all of these uh, go for that one as well and uh, maybe that one and that one 
and that one over there. So this is my kind of floor. Uh, oh, got another one, actually. Let's not have that one. I think that was actually on a leaf. So we'll bin that and go back to here. Okay, so let's select our X, Z is the plane we want, that's fine. Uh, so left and right and then depth, uh, set from selection. I'm going to come up and choose an origin point. Now the origin point is going to be the place I want any 3D object to be spawned as I add it to the scene. So this is going to become my new 000 point in 3D space. Now this looks like a good place, so I'm going to select that one there. I'm just going to click on select from selection and you could make this bigger if you wanted to, but one point is probably all you need, set from selection. And now I want to define the scale of my scene. Now, of course, if you were on location, you could, you know, either just put a couple of black lines um, and measure them so you know where they are in the footage, um, or add those as track points, uh, or put a ruler in, anything like that, or just measure places that are quite contrasty to you. Um, so I'm gonna choose, let's have a look. I think this looks like it's probably about my guess is gonna be about 60 centimeters. So if we come down to set from selection for the scale, the tracker will have made a guess and it's guessed at 40 centimeters, well, or 39 centimeters. Uh, I think I will probably go somewhere between the two. So I'm gonna to go to 0.45, maybe point, 0.5. Let's just go for 50. That's halfway between my guess and the tracker's guess. So we'll do that and this is pretty much all we need to do other than click the aligned button again which locks everything in position and now i'm going to go to export you can see that it's dropped the darkening effect and the points are gone and that's because if we go back to flow we'll have a load of new nodes so i'm going to grab these new nodes just drag them over and organize myself a little bit i'm going to have my ground plane right at the bottom and i'll put my point cloud next to it this is my 3D camera, which I'm going to put in, actually, let's take the merge and we'll put that here. Select our merge and look at that in our left-hand view and our camera tracker output here, which we'll put in the right-hand view. And you can see we have a pink floor. Don't be upset that that looks like this at the moment. That's because we're not looking through the right camera. So if I click in here, right click and go to, why am I not seeing cameras? Let's go to our merge. We'll look at the merge in there as well. And we'll look at the camera there because that's the right way to do this. So camera 3D1. And now you can see that we have our grid laid out. Now, if we go back to our right hand view, I'm just going to left and middle mouse button and drag out uh, just so that I can now uh, option middle mouse button and pan around. You can see we have those bushes that were tracked a little bit there and elements in the scene. So we have a pretty good solid ground plane and the tracking points are all stuck to our pink ground plane, which is pretty good. You can see our location point is exactly where I chose it to be, which is this area here. Uh, if I just back out a bit more, you can see we now have, and I'll just pan across, we have our tracking data looking pretty good. And you can see all the keyframes for all the mov movements in this camera. So I'll go back to the start frame press play and you'll see that our camera moves through the 3D scene. The image plane is stuck as it should be um, and all our point data is there in the scene. And if we look in the right hand viewer, you can see these points are all looking pretty good and they're all stuck as they need to be. So what do we actually do with this now? Well, if we come in with our merge selected, we can add our 3D shape or we could import an FBX, anything like that. Um, let's go ahead and just do that. So we have this. I'm going to open a bin up and I'm just going to add a material. Uh, what should we have? Um, let's oh, let's just use a, a simple concrete. So I'm going to drag that into my scene, close my bin down. And if I just find my shape, which is here, right click on there, drag it over and choose material. So we now have this. I'm going to choose a sphere. And let's reduce the radius uh, to say 0.4. Uh, now, this is actually would be intersecting the, the floor. So if I zoom in in this view, uh, because the, the pivot point of that object is kind of in the center of the sphere, you'll see it's actually intersecting that floor uh, 
there's a good way of seeing it. So it's actually half underneath our ground plane. Um, we can fix that just by going into the transform tools and choosing 0.4 for our offset. And that will now be sitting on the floor. So you can see the base of that sphere is now where I wanted it to be. And if we just look through here, uh, which is our output uh, tracked camera, I'm gonna go to the ground plane, just turn off the visibility because we don't need to see that anymore. And now if I just come in here and click play, you'll see our sphere is perfectly tracked in. And that is how to use the camera tracker inside of Fusion 9.